What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, welcome to this week's episode of Weekly Indie Newcomer. This week we're going to be taking a look at Merchants of Kaidan, a game which I've had for about two weeks, but I wanted, before I featured it, I wanted to wait and watch and see how the updates were coming along. And as of right now, I think that the updates are coming along reasonably well, the developers just added a whole bunch of quests, but before we get to that, I'd like to say that this game is essentially a trading simulator. This is not going to be a game that's for everybody, however at the same time, it's a little bit more arcadey and fast paced, and also it has like a little bit of RPG mixed in by comparison with a lot of other trading sims. Additionally, I'd also like to say that during the course of this 25 minute playthrough, we're probably not going to see a whole lot of the depth in the game. I'm going to try and hit all the points that I possibly can. But if we don't get to it, we don't get to it. I have taken the liberty of recording two or three episodes of the game, but it's the older version before they added a whole bunch of content in, and so I decided to hold the episodes because they were sort of just kind of me riding around selling things. Now the game has had over 50 quests added to it, like a whole bunch of new stuff, and so it's by Forever Entertainment. If you like the video, it's for $14.99 on Steam right now. So without further ado, let's go ahead and play the game. We can choose... There's three different ways that we can start the game, so the only one with an actual storyline is Olivion de Kalin, and this is still sandbox. All three are sandbox adventures, however they have different win, I guess they have different, they have different win destinations, they have different kind of objectives, win objectives. This one is actually the only one that's based on a storyline, Olivion de Kalin. And so you have to avenge your father's death, and you do that by going along a quest. You do different like aspects of the quest where it'll be like, turn this in here, go over to here, get the knife from this guy, talk to this guy to set up this, you know, rule this area of the merchant kingdom and so forth, and eventually you'll be able to avenge your family. The merchant's dream is just, the point is to get rich. And then once you get rich, you're rich and you're like, yay, and that's the end of the game. Dream accomplished. You can be the big small adventure, which is just a little tiny adventure, so you can play the game for a little while and just see how well you can do. Today we'll be going with Olivion de Kalin. Because I feel that sort of shows off the gameplay the best out of all of the different options. Whereas the other sandbox options are cool. I like this one the best because I like a little bit of storyline to be interspersed with everything else. The first thing you're going to notice about this game is the fantastic attention to detail when it comes to the way that the game is animated. And also the way that the game is illustrated. I mean everything in this game is beautiful. When it comes to the art direction, they spent a lot of time just getting everything looking loverly. So the first thing we need to do is, this is for the tutorial. Let's see here, you have a cart, but you don't have money for goods. You don't have an assistant either, who would know something about draft animals, and who could, can't, who could handle the cart along the way. Start by selling the only valuable thing you have, the family ring. You can't show it to anyone anyway, so as not to reveal your identity. You can sell objects in the shop, you can follow the current tasks in the quest log. And so I'm not going to do the tutorial because I know what's up. And so the first thing we need to do is we are this guy right here, Olivion de Kalin. Our family has been betrayed, we have been thrown down from our upper hoity-toity noble spires. We no longer get to wear the lovely doily underwear that the nobility of these lands get to wear. Traditionally, we have we have to get rid of our doily underwear. It's unfortunate. It doesn't matter. And the new underwear, it's made out of wool. It does not breathe at all. It is quite sweaty, itchy, and uncomfortable, and also a little bit rash. I think to go to the shop, we go over to Mia, and we're going to go to Sell. And we're going to go to our family ring, and every member of the De Kalin family receives such a ring on the day of his seventh birthday. As an heir, you have received the ring that your grandfather once wore, and his grandfather even before. For outsiders, it's just a golden ring with a ruby. Let's go ahead and sell it off. And so now we've got 1,500 gold with which to get ourselves started. The next thing that we need to do is let's go ahead and we'll go through all the different tabs because there is a lot of stuff to talk about in this game. And because we can't get to everything in this first impressions video, I'd instead like to show you a lot of the different shops and mechanics and things like that. And honestly, they all go exactly where you think they're going to go. They extrapolate almost perfectly. So here's the market. This is where you will buy and sell things. Obviously, we can buy food very cheaply right now. We can buy hides very, very expensively, so hides are not good at the moment. Hides, you typically want to buy around 10. Food, you want to buy around 4, but it's at 3 right now to help us get started in the game. Olive oil, you want to buy when it's down around 40. Iron ore, you typically want to buy when it's down around... Oh, I've seen it get down to like 20-ish, I think, and that's usually when I'll start risking it. But this is always, first and foremost, a trade simulator. So you want to focus on efficiency between your routes and making sure that you're buying and selling at a reasonable margin. This over here is the tavern, and in the tavern we can hire mercenaries, which are these little guys with the circular shields. I'll go ahead and hire him because you have to have at least one mercenary to guide your cart, and so it's going to cost us 40 gold and 1.5 per day to keep him employed. That's all that we need. You can also hire specialists like this guy right here. 
This guy is a captain or a sergeant. He makes you, if you get yourself in any trouble with bandits or you get into conflict, this guy makes all of your soldiers, all of your mercenaries, that guy that we previously hired, if you have this guy in your party, he makes them all fight a whole lot more efficiently. But he won't join us because we have low status at the moment. And you increase your status by gaining certain amounts of money and then paying tithes to the merchant's guild, which will then be like, all right, you're totally rich enough. You showed us that you have the capability to acquire bling. Therefore, we elevate you in society. And so you'll upgrade that a few times along the way. These people right here are just random conversations you can have. You buy them around, and so if you buy them alcohol, they will occasionally give you like a freebie quest or something like that. Or sometimes they'll give you a piece of a treasure map, which will help you defeat a monster more easily. A lot of like random stuff you can get out of these people right here. This right here is a knife game where you have to, t it's like the thing, I think they had it in Bioshock. Was it in Bioshock? No, it was in Rage. It was in Rage where you have to dance the knife in between your fingers without stabbing yourself. I've never been able to win at it because apparently I just have an immense propensity for cutting my own fingers. This right here is the Academy. In the Academy, you can train different skills for your specialist. So you know that sergeant that we had back in the tavern? This is the location where you would buy him new skills to make him even better at the things that he does. You can also buy things. So for example, this is a big book of botany. And I have no idea. This book contains a set of tips from the Far East. Okay, so this allows your gardening specialist to level up. So if you have a gardener in your group, which you can get your own land holdings later on, which you can then develop in the way that you see fit, whether it's growing grain or having yourself a brewery or, you know, putting a mine in. You can do all kinds of interesting things in this game. The final place that we haven't been, well, there's the blacksmith over here. This is where you're going to buy and sell carts. You can also buy yourself newer, more upgraded, pimped out caddies if you wanted to. You can, grind, you can buy an ice box so that you can carry ice around. I've never been an ice merchant. I don't really know how that works or if it's efficient to do. I always focus on trading hides and I focus on trading clothing tend to be the two that I focus on. You can also buy yourself a leech alien, which is faster than a normal horse. You can get one leech alien for each of your carts to help you go around the map a little bit quicker. And then finally, we have the item shop, where you can buy all manner of random objects. Some of them are just vendor trash, so some of these things you'll get from random quests, and you just sell them because that's all that they are. Other things such as, let's see here, there we go. So other items, if you have them in your inventory, for example, this is a sea map. It makes your travels last a lot shorter. Uh, I guess it lowers the duration of like your sea travel, for example. Or, that's not good. What is this right here? Okay, and so the Clawling's Claw, if you wear it as an amulet, it clouds your opponent's minds. It doesn't say specifically what that does, but from the definition, I would suppose that it probably makes you do a little bit better in combat. Now that we've taken a look at everything, we've got a couple of menus at the top. This is where the RPG comes in. You've got your rank, you've got how much money, you've got how many diamonds you have, how many things you're carrying. I don't know what Dark Council means. I have no idea. Your four specialists that you can have on board, how many mercenaries and employees you have, your luck, which comes into play later on with random events. You've got what you're carrying along with you, you've got your different kinds of carts, this is essentially your your transit inventory versus your physical inventory. You've got the storyline thus far, so you can read through right here. There is a pretty solid storyline running through this game that you can follow along with. There's your quest log, because people give you quests along the way to go slay monsters and do stuff with your mercenaries, it'd be awesome. And then finally an item inventory for your personal items that are buffing your group. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and do a little bit of trading. We're going to jump on into the market, and first things first, we're going to buy a whole bunch of food because it's really, really cheap right now. And when you're doing your trading, this is the overworld map. This is where most of your work is going to be done. It's, it's reasonably large. You can get airships later on. You can do a number of really, really cool things that haven't been fully fleshed out in the beta. But the game is going in a beautiful direction. I was skeptical about the game for a little while, which is one of the reasons that I didn't feature it when it first came out, because it was very repetitive, and you within like 20 minutes, you were already seeing the same random events over and over again. And I think the developers are focusing pretty well on the grievances that I had had, which is good because I didn't air those videos, so I'm glad that they know what the shortcomings of the game are to begin with. And so you get random events when you travel in between locations, and it charges you your upkeep automatically. So let's say that we're going to go to Timova, which is right here. It takes one day to travel. The travel cost is 3 gold and 13 silver for just our transit costs. And so if we go there, you'll see a little cart going down to Trimova or Timova or whatever. And we can sell the food at a 7 gold profit right here, which is pretty good. So we made about 200 gold right there, selling that food off. Now it's not always going to be this easy. Ideally, if we had wanted things to go really well, I wish that the hides were cheaper right here so that we could go both ways, back and forth, giggity. And in going both ways, we would find ourselves making money on both legs of our trip. Now you want to focus, as a little bit of a tip for people that are going to get the game, you want to find locations where it's one day to and from and you're making a profit. So here to here is one day. 
here to here is one day here to here is one day and so those are the three locations that I tend to check in on first when I'm looking for deals and if you can run in either direction back and forth between these while making a profit that one day makes sure that you aren't paying the overhead for troops and things too much if you're running three days out it costs you money because you're paying your mercenaries especially once your troop gets a little bit larger so down the line to give you a bit of a Oh, they have a city turnpike control. There's a hill herb confiscation. And so hill herb is exactly what you think it is. It's just weed, marijuana, Mary Janes. And so they'll try if you have any. If you're carrying illicit goods, they'll try and take it. But we don't have any, so I'm not going to pay a bribe. Customs officers didn't find anything illegal. They didn't find anything at all because our carts are empty. Let's go ahead and continue trading the food. The price appears to be going up slightly. So we do want to rush this out. We want to make this run as many times as we can in the early game. To make, I mean, it's hard to make money in the early game because your profit margins are really razor thin. You're not going to find deals like this very often. The game starts this way to help you out so that you can get some initial things bought. But if you don't capitalize on this early part of the game, you will regret it. So we're already, you can see right there, the prices are already going up. That's why we want to trade within one day. And from what you can see, the game is fast-paced. Now, luckily, the prices are rising right here in Timova, along with the prices going up in Dunlar, so we might be able to make this last a little bit longer. Okay, so there it is. We finally run the due course right here. We'd only be making one gold. So what we want to do now is sort of tour the kingdom and figure out locations where we can make a little bit of cash. And so the first place that I'm going to check in is in Ovoros. It's going to take us three days to get there. It costs us a little bit of gold, but we made 600 gold in those last couple runs. So it's not going to be too bad. Here, we can get food reasonably cheaply. We can also get hides almost cheaply enough to make a profit, but not quite. They're still risky. Let's swing on out to Ranta and see what they've got here. Now, I will point out at this point in the gameplay, so the hides are pretty cheap right there. I'll go ahead and take a chance on them. Let's buy these hides. And we bought those at what? At 12? 12 is okay. I'd prefer to buy them at like 10. But I think if the prices are still high here in Dunlar, we should be alright. After emerging from a sharp curve, you see a fight in progress. Several robbers are attacking a merchant. Do you want to help him? No, we don't have any fighters. Okay, and so we left him with no remorse. That's his problem. Meh, we gotta survive. Yeah, we made a little bit of a profit right there. Not a lot, but we made something. It put us up a little bit ahead. Unfortunately, the price dropped right there, so what I'm gonna think... I think what I'm gonna do... Let's check in at the tavern, too, because sometimes you get quests when you go to random buildings. So it's worth going into some of the other buildings off to the side, like the academies and things, because sometimes you'll get quests from people just walking around this inner map. I do like the way that every single location has its own background art. No two locations share background art. They all have their own little style and flair. There are different cultures, which are mostly divided up to, like, people over here in the east, people up in the north, and they all look a little bit different. So you've got, like, barbarians, you've got, like, fish people. It's a very interesting setting for the lore, and I do applaud the developers for taking the risk of creating a world which is all unique and to its own. It doesn't borrow from anything. There's no elves, there's no dwarves or anything. Everybody just has kind of their own thing going on. Almost an aquatic Atlantean sort of feel to the game. These ruins over here, if you can clear these out, basically if you get a ton of mercenaries, there's a big monster at the bottom of each of these ruins, and if you can clear them out with your mercenaries, you'll get yourself like a bunch of items, a bunch of gear, and a bunch of other good things. I'm going to use my time to travel. We're going to travel to Nar for right now. We've got to do a bridge crossing, which is going to be pricey, but I want to see what's going on in Nar. So there it is. Additionally, what's this? During your travel, you meet an old lady leaning on a stick. When she sees you, she says, Are you unlucky, young man? I can help you. Do you want the old lady to say blessings for you? Yeah, sure, why not? The old woman has blessed you and your luck has increased. If you're interested in what that affects, once we pull in here... Let's have a look. You'll see that my luck quotient has gone up slightly, so it's at 0.8 right now. It maxes out at plus 3 from what I recall. And yeah, there it is. And it maxes out at plus 3 and it bottoms out at minus 3. And this affects whether you get good events, good outcomes, or bad outcomes for your different events. So you do want to pay attention to this. A lot of the time, this is going to feel like it's outside of your control. So don't stress too much if you bottom out your luck. It just means that bad things are going to happen to you more frequently. And that's just something that you've got to live with. This game is about ups and downs. And there's a lot of RNG involved with it because you get the random events that you get. So... Try not to get frustrated about the RNG elements. They are what they are. Additionally, the prices will change depending on the season. So right now, we're in the middle of summer, so food pr everything's going to be mostly stable throughout spring, summer, and fall. But once you get to winter, prices just go crazy all over the place. And so I tend to spend personally my summer, I tend to spend my summer and all those other seasons doing lots of marketing. And then once I get to winter, I tend to do my adventuring and fighting with mercenaries and things. So 
just stuff to think about. So here in NAR, prices are still not so great. Unfortunately, I'm not showcasing much right now, which is a little bit bad. Hides are selling pretty high right there. They're selling at 17, so let's check back in over here. Can I buy... Eh, so it's pretty much... It's iffy right there as well. We can go to... Not a lot of trade options right now. Go not as two days. Let's go ahead and check that out. You're better off. There's a lot of meta game that goes into this. Like you're gonna want to memorize the different prices and figure out because the prices are constant between games. And so, for example, ten gold is a universally good price for hides, no matter what playthrough you're on. Whether on your first or your tenth playthrough, ten gold is a great price for hides. They don't vary very much. They stay inside the same brackets. It'd be interesting if later on they decide to randomize all of the different prices depending on your startup. But I think that might be a little bit cumbersome and stressful. So right now, the markets all seem to be pretty stable. I think I'm going to focus on... Let's go to Vane Haas then. There's a Miracle and Nanophore, which meant that price is on. Let's go back here. Can I look at that in my diary? Let's see. I don't have really anything going on right now. Let's go to the tavern. You look like a good man. It wasn't that hard to find you. I have a business, or I have business to do here, and I can't go to Nordafor with this package. So if you are discreet and quick, I shall reward you when you come back here with the item that you bring in return. Can you manage it? Sure, this guy doesn't look shady at all. He's only holding dice and looks like a Nosferatu. I mean, what could possibly go wrong working for such a beady-eyed fellow? He's also wearing crimson, which in my opinion is also the color that antagonists wear. Well, whatever. I will gladly serve you. That guy right there, I think he's a brewmaster. He's a master of aging. He's really, really good at getting old. No, you need him later on. If you decide to make your own brewery, that's what he's used for. This right here is the shrine where you could pay money to hopefully get random stuff. So when you flip these coins, there's random things on the bottom. So sometimes you'll get like 25 hides. Sometimes you'll get plus one to luck. Sometimes you'll get just like random stuff. It's just you're gambling to see what you can get out. Later on in the game, it becomes a good thing to do to balance out your luck. But in the early game, it costs way too much. And it's going to it's gonna bankrupt you pretty quickly. Checking the market. The prices here still suck. Well, damn. Naughty Four is Naughty Fort, as I like to call it, is right there. So let's go up to Naughty Fort. We're going on a quest to Naughty Fort. It sounds like the greatest place ever in medieval times. Like, oh, you spent the weekend at Naughty Fort. And I'd be like, you're damn right I did. Came back broke, but I came back happy. Prices look like they're dwindling down right here. We'll come back and check in on them in a minute. It's going to be expensive for us to get all the way across to Naughty Fort. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. A black snake hog has passed your path. Everyone knows that that's a bad omen. Your luck decreases. Obviously, everybody knows that. I mean, it's common knowledge. Every time I say a snake hog, I'm like, hey, snake hog, don't cross my path. That price is looking a little bit better, but I'd still prefer to see food a little bit lower. Let's grab it just in case. We bought it eight, so maybe we'll be able to do better. We'll check in at Tun and Gone first. We'll make the roundabout route, even though that guy said that we were on a time schedule. So we bought it 8.4. Prices are pretty much standard right here. We'll go on up to Resuvio. We've pretty much eaten up all of our profits already from any of these trips, but at least it offset. As they say, armies are worse than dysentery, but you can't stop maneuvers from happening. Because the roads were blocked by the army, your trip took one day longer than expected. Awesome. You can make 10 silver per sale right there, but that's not enough of a margin for me to be like, Hooray! And dance up and down while jiggling my arms like a leprechaun. Very few things make me that happy, though. An Epidemi and Asmore, the price of olive oil is very, very high. Where is Asmore? There we go. It's a little bit better. That'll offset at least some of our costs of travel. We made a profit. We made about two gold off each one, and we had 30 units, so we made about 60 gold back. Unfortunately, the thing that you really, really make margins on... Oh, wow. Olive oil is pretty expensive right now. If you could find it at a cheap price somewhere else. But everything's high right now in this location, so... Whatever, we need to drop off. We're in Naughty Four. Let's see here. Naughty Fort. There it is. So you go to the inn, and then you're going to click on this thing. Who sent you? Oh, so you have the package? Good, very good. Take this ring as a token. And so we get that little signet ring. And let's take that back to our friend, or at least that stupefying employer, that terrifying employer back at our previous location. It's going to cost us 21 gold to make it back to, what, Satio is the name of the place? In Satio, we can buy food reasonably cheap. Hides are also a little bit low, so let's go ahead and buy a cart full of hides. 
and maybe we can sell those at 20 something somewhere. Let's go back to Fast Bjorn or whatever this place. Fast Bam, that's what it is. Gods bless your observant eyesight. You saw a glimpse of life in the or light in the grass and found five trigons. That's what the gold is called. It's not much, but it's five, so it offsets our travel costs slightly. Oh, this place is even cheaper. Well, damn. Money-making opportunity? Let's check Nor and find out if there's a money-making opportunity here. There is. So let's go ahead and sell right here for a small profit, but we're getting 15, and then right here you were buying at 12, I think. Hopefully one is going up and the other is going down. Buy at 13 right there, and we'll go back to Nor, where we will sell at 15. Made a little bit of money, not bad. A little bit of cash, scratch to put on top of the cart. Although I think that price is dropping. I think it was at 19 the last time we came through here. So let's go back to Vane Haas and we'll turn in that quest. Our journey was eventless and that's exactly the way that I like it. Let's go to Vane Haas and get ourselves a little bit of extra cash. A woman with buckets hanging from her shoulders has passed in front of you. The coachman quickly leaps to check if they're empty or not. They were empty and your luck decreases. So I guess empty buckets are bad luck. There's a lot of empty buckets in every city across the entire world, so I'm thinking that there's a whole lot of bad luck going around. Although, looking at the state of the world, that doesn't surprise me. So here at the market, we got to check back in with our informant or whoever this guy is. Did you deliver the gift? Great. It's a pleasure working with you. Here, I expect you're thirsty. Take this so you can get yourself a drink. Bye. So, oh, we got 500 gold. Not bad. Not bad at all. So, obviously, your profit margins are going to be razor thin in this game until you get yourself, like, two or three more carts. To give you a contrast, I think my save... I don't think they wipe my save, but... In one of my other games, I have like 15 carts, and I make so much money on every run. I make upwards of 8,000 to 9,000 gold on every trade run that I make. It's pretty incredible how quickly the game transi transitions from you not making much money to making just money hands over fist to the point where nothing can stop you and you become like this ultimate mercenary god. So you do get to that point eventually, and some people are going to find this game to be grindy, but others will find it to be sort of fascinating. I don't know, it's, it depends what you're into, I think. Let's go back and check on our one-day transit between Dunlar. Ah, God bless your observant eyesight. We found 20 trigons in a bush. Hooray! Eh, ooh, this price is looking pretty good. 12 for hides? Yeah, why not? I bet we'll hit something where we can sell those hides. God bless your observant eyesight. You find a diamond in the grass. Hooray! I wish I could find a diamond in the grass. That'd be awesome. Although hide prices are a little bit low here. Slightly concerning. Hopefully they aren't in Timavar or Timava or whatever this place is called. There we go. So now the prices are okay. Let's go back and see if we can make a little bit of money. Selling here. It's at 13. I didn't pay attention. To, I know that it was a profit, but I didn't pay attention to how much of a profit. Two gold per run. Not too good, but not too bad. It's enough to make a profit. So it's at 15 right now. Let's go back to Dunlar. We'll bounce in between these two locations. Hopefully it stays at 15 because I'm running the risk right now. That price is getting a little bit moderate. If the market falls apart, then we will find ourselves weeping and gnashing our teeth before we can go much further. It looks like they lowered the frequency. When I played this game before, there it is. And so the market has finally gone away, but we can get food for reasonably cheap. So we might as well try that. And then we'll go up to Ovoros. And so we've been blocked by armies one more time. So our day, our trip took one day longer than normal. Ah, and food is selling really, really high right here. So we got four gold per. Hides are also a little bit low, so we might be able to make a two-way trip back and forth. I don't know. We just bought it 13. We'll see what happens. The other reason that you want to be careful about traveling long distances is when you travel long distances, unfortunately, the markets, they shift around very, very quickly. So in the period of four to five days, an entire market can rearrange and this can bottom out in four or five days. And so that's why I tend to go between the one day routes as well, because it maximizes the amount of time that you can spend making money in between two locations before the market shifts all in on itself. Now, I think we're just about out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. The name of the game is called Merchants of Kai Dan. It's a very cool little trading sim, kind of arcadey, fast paced, but slow paced at the same time. It balances a lot of interesting things. And so I think at this point, it's gonna be a good spot to touch up on our pros and cons. In the pros column, I would say that the game is wonderfully animated, beautifully designed and illustrated. I think that the game really aesthetically does a lot to set itself apart from all of its competition. Now, there aren't a ton of trading games out there, and obviously you're not going to find anything as complicated in this game as you would find in a game like Patrician. But what you will find in this game is a reasonably lightweight, fast-paced trading simulator in which you can go on adventures, you can develop your character, you can have a mercenary troop, you can do all kinds of fun stuff, you can build your own buildings. And so the game kind of alternates between being fast-paced, slow-paced, 
based, having a large scale game and a small scale game. It does only have the one campaign available for right now aside from the two generic ones, but hopefully they'll add a few more in the future. On the con side, I would say that every now and again, the game just has a weird tendency to swap markets too quickly. And then in certain seasons and at certain times, the markets are just ridiculously just spastic almost. Like they're just very, very difficult to get a read on. And so there are a lot of periods where you feel like you're just treading water. Aside from that, the game will get tedious to players who constantly need like new stimuli and new things happening. But if you enjoy making money and just running trade routes and enjoying a storyline, Merchants of Kaidan is a reasonably fun game. Merchants of Kaidan can be purchased for $14.99 on Steam right now. I like the game. If you like trading simulators, I think it's worth checking out. The developers have been really good about updating it so far and they've been pretty accurate at hitting all the things about the game that bugged me and fixing them and so every time I find something that irritates me I figure that it'll probably be fixed in about a week or so so that'll be that check out Merchants of Kaidan this week on Steam my name is Splattercat this is Weekly Indie Newcomer and I will see you next week on Friday take care out there everybody